he's had his first 12 months and I think he's he's had a really good 12 months he's um he's he's, he's had, had a net profit of at least 140,000 in his first net. year well wow. yeah not turnover oh, well. but net so he's had a great year cool so thanks for joining us today on the gym's podcast we've got Stephen Dibo and you're from Jim's Terminal and Pest Control you've just crossed nine years with Jim's you're coming up to your 10 but we want to get you on because um, you've come come down from New South you New South Wales Canberra. Or? Yes, yep, Kermit, just other side of Canberra. Yeah, other side of Canberra, and but you've got um, your family involved in your business, which I think is a really good aspect to talk about, Jim's, because we it is a it is a family business for a lot of people. So do you want to just talk a little bit about your background and about how your family's involved with your business? Okay, so we've had a few businesses over the years. We've had motels, supermarkets. We we had it twelve months off and tried to work out what we wanted to do with work. So we um, <clears throat> so we just hold the seat. <laughs> I'll see you walking. You're making dizzy. No, That's good. so yeah. Um, yeah, we uh, looked at gyms. We found it to be really good. It was a really good good fit for us. Um, so I had some young kids at the time, which I got to spend a lot more time with. And as they progressed and went through school and university, they came along with me and actually worked on the side through the holiday period and and any time they had off. And from there, they've um, both my two oldest boys have got their pest license through gyms. And um, yeah, my um, son-in-law to be, he, um, he was a draftsman. He saw how the business was, and so he decided to join us as well. Yep. So he's had his first 12 months, and I think he's, he's had a really good 12 months. He's, um, he's, he's, he's had a net profit of at least 140,000 in his first net. year. Wow. Yeah, not turnover, oh, wow. but net. So he's had a great year. So my oldest son, who works in project management in Canberra, he's joining us now. He's going through the training. My youngest son works with me, so he's um, five days a week with me, and more likely, we will hopefully, he'll take another franchise on. And so, yeah, it's been a good fit for our family. And and my wife's joined the group as well, yeah. so she'll oversee and help the boys out with their um, their bookwork and so on. So it's, it's a good fit. So how did you come across pest control because you obviously it's interesting to hear you say you've had all these independent businesses before which is a good thing to, to learn mm. so then why did you decide to go with a franchise because you would have been used to doing it yourself or doing these other businesses then you've chosen to do this this model i've never been big on franchises but and we looked at a lot when we sold the supermarket we had 12 months where we looked at a lot of franchises and their business model was all around the fact of the more money that you turn over is, yeah is, is going to be a percentage of what they charge you, where Jim's is just a flat rate, a monthly flat rate. So whether you're making 100000 or 300000 a year, you're still paying the same fixed monthly fee, which, yep. which I think is great. Now, why did you then choose pest control? Because it's a completely different industry to what you're in. How did you decide to go into that? Uh, pest control was, I don't know really how I got into it originally, but that, that business kept on popping itself up. It had a really good return. The people that had the business probably weren't a really good fit for gyms. I shouldn't say that, but they weren't. But, um, and they're making good money. So I thought, well, if they can make that sort of money and they run their business like they have, yeah. um, then obviously I can make a hell of a lot more money, and which I have. Did you have an interest in doing termite and pest control? Because it's such a, like, cause people might go, how do you get into that? And like, is there something that was interest-based or you just saw it more as a vehicle to do the business and you could see the earning potential for it? Or how was it? Well, I, I actually had a trial with the people that were selling yep. the business for a week and got to work with with them and their customers, and, and it was quite rewarding. You're sort of fi yeah, you're fixing a problem. That's what I liked yep. about it. Like if they had a problem, you were there to fix it, and you had some sort of um, gratification after it. Yeah, yeah, because that's a good point where you said um, you are you are sort of they're desperate in need, and people don't want bugs in their house and mm. stuff, and you're there as you said to. You fix the problem, you solve it. They need you to come and do something for them. You get that instant yeah. reaction. And you, your customers become your friends. Yep. And like over the years, it's been fantastic. You know, I've seen their kids grow up as well because I've been there doing it for about nine years as well. Mm. You become part of the family. You get to see them at least once, maybe twice a year. Um, but, you know, it's always good to bump into them and, and say g'day. It's, it's really nice. And what sort of training is involved with becoming a Terminal and Pest Control franchisee? Uh, you have to do, you have to have two licences. There's the General Pest Licence and there's also the Timber Pest Licence. So both those courses can be done in a classroom environment in Sydney. Uh, we use MPL, which is a training organisation. Um, they have to do at least four weeks in the field with me on the job. That way they'll get to use... Uh, the, the back office, like formatise, dealing with the customers. You, you're actually training from start to finish. They usually will sit in the car with me, they'll do the job with me, and they'll do it correct, yep. And um, how long 
does it actually take to do, do do people like keep working their job then do it at night or they, how does it all work with the training we're pretty flexible on the yeah. practical training whether they can do it while they're still working in their current job um the theory training they can do that via correspondence but we recommend the classroom trainings yeah. probably the quickest it's like a four-day course either in sydney melbourne or brisbane uh, then you have to go back and do a pra some practical training with them, which I think is about a two to three day course. And then you do the practical assessment, which is a two day course. So how long roughly in total for someone to get their relevant qualification needed to do what you do? Both licenses, I would say four to six months. Okay. Yep. Yeah. If they were to hook in to some extent. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's good for people to know that because yep. um, so they can plan around it and prepare it. And how do then people like if they've got a current full time job, do they work it? Do they do that course part time out of hours, or how do they work the transition for themselves if they want to do it? If the course itself, as I said, can be a three day course, so okay. they can take three days off work and go to either Sydney, Melbourne, yep. or Brisbane and do that course in, in the classroom. Uh, and same with the the practical, yep. um, practical, and the same with the actual testing. So it's not something where they have to give up four weeks up front or, or a couple of months. They can do that over a period of time. And when it comes to the on-job training with me, I'm pretty flexible where they want to do a couple of days on the weekend or they've got Monday or Tuesday. As long as they get up that at least 20 odd days in the field with me and I think they're competent, then they can start. Now, what type of services do you provide or what can you do? Uh, we do construction, we do so new builds, pre-purchase reports, termite reports, um, Pest control in the sense of spiders, ants, cockroaches, silverfish, millipedes, wasps, we, we do um, rodents. There's not much that we don't do in the mm. way of pe pests. There are some people that do snake catching. We don't offer that service um, yet. Be risky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say as well, there's a large variety of what you do. I've done a day on the road with James Lyon before down mm. here, and it's quite interesting. Like, it's a very interesting job. Like, you've got to, you know, you're getting, obviously, the customer's telling you one thing, but you've got to then make an assessment, and you've got to, get in all the nooks and crannies and do all these different things. It's quite a problem solving. It is, it is. Intensive job. Sometimes yeah. what the customer thinks they have is, is the problem isn't exactly what it is. So yeah. I'll say that oh, we've got rats in the roof and long story short, by the time we've gone through the roof, we've, we've told them that it's a possum, yeah. okay? It's, they get a little bit confused. So it, it's a problem solving, yeah. Where, where, what time are they hearing the noises? What's, what are they hearing? And so I'm like, it's a bit of problem solving. Yeah, it seems like every day would be a little bit different with you guys. You don't know what you're going to come up to. And, no. And um, it'd be very, like, if you want to have a, like, obviously, if people looking at Jim's franchise, there's a whole different things you can go into. But I think something where there's a, if you like problem solving, you want to challenge every day, mm. something like this would be it really good. It is rewarding, good. yeah. Yeah. We had a job there the other day where a possum fell through a roof. An older lady in her 80s said that she thought there was a possum in the roof. Um, when we got there, we put the, the ladder up in the manhole in the garage, turned the light on, turned the torch on. There's the possum straight down the middle of the roof looking at me. <laughs> Told the old lady um, that, yes, definitely that there was a um, possum in the roof. Still had my ladder up in the actual roof void. And um, as I went out to set the traps up, the possum came down the ladder. The lady was quite impressed. I was like the Pied Piper, <laughs> coming out of the roof. So long story short, it was happy to get out of the roof. It was trapped in yeah, there. Yeah. Instead of putting the apple in the, in the trap, I gave it to the possum, gave it a little drink of water, and off it went, happy as... There you go. Yeah. Something different every day. Yeah, I was going so, to yeah, say, how big is your business currently? You've been going for nine years. Do you have employees, or how, how big is your current operation? I myself have only employed one or two. Yep. Um, I've got one full-time employee, which is my son. Um, other franchisees in the group have got at least one, maybe two employees. Um, Glenn, the franchisee, yes, yes, he had up to five, but he's scaled it back to two now. But he'll he's kicking goals. Most of my guys, it's up to them. Some people want the employees, um, and some people are quite happy to be just a sole trader, like just running the business by, some, by themselves. Yeah. And a common question you would always get, and we always get, is people go, well, how much am I going to make, right? So that's the question they get when recruiting. So... Can you maybe give it a ballpark? You don't have to say exactly. You know, obviously, this is all on the person to do it as well. Yep. But like what sort of you know turnover can is achievable with, with a business like this? Well, I believe turnover or bottom line are we talking, Joe? Up to you. Okay. Are you going to disclose? Well, we must say you've okay. got to find it. You've okay. you got to do your own as research example, and stuff. But... My son-in-law, yep. first 12 months, I said he paid tax on 140000 That's his net profit. It's okay? amazing. So that's a pretty good effort yeah. for his first year. There's other franchisees out there who would be making more than that. There probably are the franchisees 
that probably aren't making quite, most of them would make at least 100,000 a year, That's I great. believe. I yeah. believe. Yeah, and I think the good thing about it is if you want to do as a sole trader, you can make really good money as a sole trader, equivalent to probably a 250, 300K corporate job if you take out all the oh, yeah. expenses and stuff, which oh, yeah. I think is just an amazing thing to be able to do. But as you said, if you want to have employ people and stuff, you've got that option as well. So I think you can do both models as well. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, it's big enough to grow it. We've put it on staff, and then if you don't want the staff, that you there's at least enough work for one person there. Definitely. And what sort of person then suits Jim's Termite and Pest Control? Who are the ones that do well? Is there any sort of um, questions that people should ask themselves about before coming a franchisee? What would you say to them? You've got to have drive. Yeah. You've got to be able to talk to the customer. That's probably the biggest thing. You, like you can be the best pest controller in the world, but if you can't talk to the customer, you've got to be a bit of a salesman to some extent. Mm. Um, if you don't like talking to people and you don't want to get to know people, probably pest control isn't for you. Um, you know, it's, um, you meet people, as I said, a lot of the time those clients do become your friends and you know, you know them on a first name yep. basis, yeah. And I was going to say, um, if someone wants to become a franchisee with you, are they, can they do an observation day or how do they get it? More than happy to have anybody yep. ride along with myself. Usually I'll have to get, ask my franchises if they're happy, but... 100% of the time, they're usually happy to have somebody ride along with them for the day. Yep. And they'll give you the insight of what it's like to be a pest controller for gyms for a day. Yeah. Now let's talk about support because you're a franchisor. So maybe people who don't know what a franchisor is, do you want to outline what your role is as a franchisor and what does that actually mean? So I'm like a mentor. I'm yep. I'm probably the, the person they did their training, original training with them. I'll go through and help them with their books. I'll help them with all their invoicing as well. We're also a bit of a, what would you class this? <laughs> So help mental health. Yes, there's a lot of counselling sometimes. Yeah, yes. so like, like yeah. every customer isn't always great. Um, Ninety percent of the time they're great, but you do get customers that are hard work. Um, some franchisees can be a little bit beat down by some of their yep. their customers, but have a chat to me. Um, they they realise that they're not the only one. But we've all been through that mm. at some stage, and just the way to handle it, pretty well. Yeah. And um, what would you then say, to someone looking at? becoming a franchisee if you, what's it done for your life? Like what, what is actually achievable? So someone might be in an unhappy job or they want to work for themselves and they're looking at Jim's turmoil and pest control. What, what is actually achievable with it? Like what's it done for you? Well, for me, it's brought my family into the business. Mm. Um, I've seen some people that haven't, were never given a start in life to some extent. Yeah. People that either their parents didn't believe in them or they'd never had the money. If I find the right person, I'll back them um, and give them a chance, change their life and you know, it's. I think as you get older, it's not all about how many dollars you got in the bank, but how many people you help up on the way to sort of put them in a better position than what they started with. That's that's my big goal. And what them. and what areas does your region cover? I've got from pretty well the Victorian border from Albury through to the bottom of Wollongong, and then I've got from Newcastle through to Tweed Heads, and then, area. <laughs> and then from the north side of the Brisbane River through to Cairns. Big area. Yeah, a lot of pests up there for people to look after. Yes, yes. <laughs> a lot of work. But how much work is there available? Because a lot of people might go, well, I don't know how much work is there. I'm not sure about the leads. Is there enough work available for people? There's a lot of work yeah. in northern Queensland that we cannot service. Yeah. Um, we don't have anybody in Townsville, Cairns, or up in that area. We may have somebody starting in Gladstone soon, which will be good. Um, but we don't advertise in those areas. So there's no point advertising for work if we can't put a franchisee yeah. there to, to service it. Um, but yeah, Jim's has got an extremely good name. Uh, throughout Australia, so it's just finding that right person to fill that role. And um, if someone wants to learn more about being a franchisee, what do they need to do? Uh, they can get on the website and uh, make an inquiry, yep. um, which will be either forwarded to the franchise or in their area. And um, yeah, they'll touch base with them, have a chat to them, send them some information. If they want to come along for a ride along, more than happy to do that. Um, any questions, all franchises would be happy to answer them. And um, we can put them in touch with existing franchisees as well, and they'll um, tell the truth how it really is. And, yeah, that's, which that's is good. Well, yeah. That's the main thing. Yeah, yeah. You, they get a list of finished franchisees, current franchisees they can yeah. call. And I think um, you guys are around 100 franchisees now, so you've got pretty good coverage across Australia. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of good um, people that can rely on, really big business network of franchisees. Oh, definitely. As well. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and if I can't help you, um, there's sure, surely there'll be a franchisor or another franchisee that yeah. can help them as well. So it's a pretty good support network. Yeah, absolutely. So if you are interested, call 131546 or head to gyms.net or just Google Jim's Pest Control. And if you are in Steve's region, he'll be, sorry, <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be your mentor. So please make sure you call if you are interested. And the, I, would, I would recommend doing what you just said then. Engage with you, get a list of franchisees, obviously come for an observation day to see if you like it, but call the franchisees in the area because it's the best thing to do. But um, as you said, 
you know, what your first year, like that's equivalent to 300K, mm. 250K corporate job mm. if you take out all the other things. So mm. not many people are earning 300K in their jobs currently. Mm. So. He'd work for it. Yeah, he'd I can imagine for he works, man. That's yeah. the thing, you've got you to work for yeah, it. So it's not, he it's not put, easy. He put in the hard work and yeah. he, he, he worked hard. Yeah. And that's an amazing result, yeah. though. But that's an amazing you achieved that. How old is he? Sean is... Don't hold to me. I think he's about 30. You should know. 38. I know. He's a little bit older than my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah. he's, um, as I said, he's drafting background. Yeah. Uh, had always worked for somebody. Had not really got anywhere. All he needed was the opportunity, and he's really ran with it. Yeah. I love it. And that's a great thing to do. And if you are thinking you are worth more than wages, I think, you know, Jim's Terminal and Pest Control is a great one because you I've been out with um, James and him for a day on the road. And it's just, you know, out and about, you buy yourself. Mm. and something a little bit different, you've got to problem solve, yep. you've got to have some knowledge, you've got to have the te- technical knowledge and stuff like that, mm. so you've always got to be learning as well. Yep. I think it's a really a really good division that people might not sometimes first look at, but I think the more you look at it, the more it will suit a lot of people. So mm. thank you very much for coming along. So no, I appreciate, thanks, it. appreciate it. Easy. Thanks, man.